Last time, we talked about how GPS works and where the major sources of error are in the system. To review, those major errors are satellite clock errors, ephemeris errors, and environmental errors, including atmospheric delays and multipath. Today, we are going to look at how to deal with these errors. Let's talk multipath first. Multipath errors are caused by the satellite signal bouncing off of things on its way to the antenna. As we discussed last time, there are some fancy processing tricks that modern receivers can do to reduce the effect of multipath signals. In addition, antennas can be designed to help eliminate multipath. We can also help minimize this error by installing the antenna in a location with a good clear view of the sky and no obstructions, for instance high up on a mast. Because multipath errors are local, correcting for them is very difficult. So the best approach is to avoid them with a smart receiver, some special antenna design, and a good antenna placement. As for all the other errors, there are two general approaches to dealing with these, differential and state-based. In a differential approach, we directly measure the positioning error at a precisely known location and use that measurement to estimate the error at some other location. DGPS, RTK, and PPK are all differential approaches. A state-based approach tries to make a better estimate about the entire configuration of the GPS system, including all of the various error sources. That is, we try to understand the state the GPS system is in. WAS, PPP, and various commercial satellite corrector services are state-based approaches. We're going to cover a bunch of acronyms here, but we'll be keeping track as we go and hopefully make some sense of all of this. Let's dig into the differential approach first. The idea here is that we have a GPS receiver in a fixed known location. Because we know where this receiver, the base station, really is, we can measure the difference between its known location and where the GPS signal says it is, and assume that the difference is our positioning error. If our mobile GPS receiver, the rover, is close enough to this fixed receiver, we can say that the error is the same for both locations and remove that error from our rover's position. DGPS is a differential system installed and operated by the U.S. Coast Guard. This system has a number of base stations permanently installed all around the coast of the United States. DGPS works by measuring and then broadcasting corrections to the positioning signal, the PRN code, sent out by the satellites. Each station broadcasts its error correction signal using its own radio frequency, similar to those used for AM radio broadcasts. For example, the DGPS station on Bjorka Island in southeast Alaska broadcasts on 305 kilohertz. To get the corrector for Bjorka, we simply tune our corrector radio to 305 kilohertz, just like we would tune our AM radio to 660 kilohertz to hear WFAN broadcasting a Yankees game out of New York City. Using a nearby DGPS station, we can often reduce our positioning error to less than a meter in the horizontal and a few meters in the vertical. That's pretty good, but not quite good enough for surveying to the ellipse. Another differential technique improves on these accuracies by looking at the corrections at the level of the carrier, rather than just looking at the PRN code. Think of that Yankees broadcast. The announcer's voice is only 300 hertz, but the signal is carried on a much higher frequency radio signal at 660 kilohertz. The GPS signal is very similar, with the PRN code being carried on a much higher frequency radio wave. Because the carrier is at a much higher frequency than the code, the wavelength is much shorter, and we can get much more precise error estimates. This carrier-based differential approach is called kinematic differential GPS. Done in real time, this is known as real-time kinematic, or RTK. If we collect all the base and rover data and figure out all the corrections after the fact, this is known as post-processed kinematic, or PPK. For both RTK and PPK, we need a fixed reference station. We can install our own base station or use an existing reference station, many of which are available in the NGS Monitored Continuously Operating Reference Station, or CORES, network. To get the data in real time for RTK, we need a reliable full-time connection between the rover and the base station. This can be through a radio modem, cell signal, or even the internet. If we get the correctors by internet, this is known as NTRIP, 
or network transmission of RTCM via internet protocol. Under the best conditions, RTK and PPK can give horizontal and vertical accuracies of a few centimeters. The key to all the differential approaches is that the errors at the base station have to be similar to the errors at the rover. This approximation is pretty good if we are right next to the base station, but gets worse as we move further away, as the baseline between the reference station and the receiver gets larger. How far is too far? Well, that depends on the satellites and the solution, the variability of the atmospheric error sources, and the desired accuracy. For accuracies less than 10 centimeters, maximum baselines of about 30 to 40 kilometers seem to work well. Let's move on to the state-based approach. Rather than measuring the total errors directly at one location, a state-based approach tries to figure out all the component pieces that make up the positioning error and do a better job than traditional standalone GPS. This approach is generally known as precise point positioning, or PPP. State-based approaches can either be real-time or post-processed. WAS, or the Wide Area Augmentation System, is a real-time state-based system run by the FAA. This system also uses a network of ground GPS stations, but rather than trying to figure out differential corrections to apply to the data, the WAS system attempts to model, in real time, actual satellite positions, clock errors, and atmospheric effects. This modeled information is broadcasted to the rovers via geostationary satellites. Commercial outfits have also set up state-based corrector services. By investing in ground networks, improved state estimation algorithms, and data transmission options, these commercial services can provide improved positioning over wide areas. Starfire by John Deere, Omnistar and Marine Star by Fugro, and Terrapaz by Novatel are all examples of commercial, real-time, state-based PPP solutions. These services now offer decimeter-level horizontal and vertical accuracy over wide areas. There are benefits and costs to all of these approaches. We hope that these videos have given you a good start on understanding how we can augment the standalone GPS system to get accuracies of decimeters or better. Thanks for watching, and good luck out there.